Hello everyone and welcome to another Ask a Physicist news segment. This time about the surprising discovery of a rogue planet. Now when I say rogue planet, what we mean by that is a planet that does not circulate around a star like the planets in our solar system and in fact all the other exoplanets we have discovered so far. Now, an exoplanet is simply a planet um, outside our solar system. And to put this recent discovery in context, I thought it would be good to review uh, our, well, the history of the discovery of exoplanets so far. The first discovery of an exoplanet was in 1992, so really not that long ago, probably within the lifetime of most of the viewers of this video. Now this planet was discovered around a pulsar. The first discovery of a planet around um, a star, much like our own, was only three years later, in 1995. Most of the planets discovered uh, since then were what we call hot Jupiters. In other words, they are gas giants uh, which circulate very close to their parent star, uh, which of course makes them rather hot, hence hot Jupiters. Out of the other ones, mostly were also gas giants. However, in 2011, so only about two years before this video, uh, we discovered the first Earth-sized planet. To think about all this, uh, before 1992, we didn't know if there were any other planets outside our solar system. In other words, we did not know whether or not we would ever discover another world, let alone a habitable one. And it wasn't till 2011 that we knew that there were planets similar to our own outside our solar system. So far we have discovered almost a thousand exoplanets, i.e. planets in other solar systems. But this most recent discovery is even more unique than the planets we have found to be similar to Earth. It is unique in the sense that, unlike all the planets we have found so far, it is not orbiting a star or a pulsar, but is instead freely floating through space without the sun to call its home. This raises interesting questions, like how did this planet form? Where did it come from? And how many are there of this sort? You can find the paper relating to the discovery of this planet in the links below. From a scientific point of view, this uh, also presents unique opportunities. Before now, every observation of a planet was always to some extent obscured by the presence of its parent star. Uh, as you probably know, stars are much bigger and also much brighter than planets. So when you try to simply observe a planet, um, the radiation of that star can get in the way and you have to make certain compromises. This is not the case with this planet and I'm looking forward to seeing what may be revealed about it. Furthermore, there have been many other objects we've observed uh, floating through space which we could not yet identify as planets. Uh, using this planet, which we have identified as a benchmark for these objects, we may be able to identify them as well. Furthermore, as stated in the paper, some of the objects we found and classified as brown dwarfs which is a type of star, may in fact be planets, after all, uh, when considering the results of this discovery. Uh, but this remains to be seen. Also, the discovery of this planet may reveal to us insights into how planets are formed in general. If the process of planet formation is so violent that it's liable to throw planets into outer space, 
uh, that would put certain limits on the formation mechanisms which are possible or which might not be possible. Um, but this also remains to be seen. Now, seeing that this planet does not have a star and therefore no constant source of heat and light, it is very unlikely that it contains life. However, that shouldn't make you think that this discovery is not particularly worthwhile. The field of searching for exoplanets is important in its own right, because it informs us about our place in the universe. And that is one of the oldest and, in a sense, most important goals of physics. And I'm looking forward to keeping you informed on new discoveries. In unrelated news, it would appear that the Ask a Physicist YouTube channel now has over 2,000 subscribers. Uh, so, if you have subscribed, thanks a lot, for it is you who, well, made this happen. Uh, so, thanks everyone, and this will be the end of the episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope I see all of you next time. Bye for now.